Hey, welcome back to Science Squad. And in this action of the Master Series, we're gonna try to match some conditions when they say user would create their password. Okay, so here how it goes. I have this stack of papers. I have this very quick rough wireframe. I have a new password field. I have some sort of popover or maybe a static box. It depends, you know, what you want to make most usable for your users. I have a strength indicator. So let's say in this case, as you can see, if user types in password and we don't finish, it would be weak, maybe that's a condition. And then I have several different indicators. For example, that it has to be at least eight characters long. So that's just a tick. Icon would change depending on what we make. Also that it has to contain at least one capital letter, something very simple, you know, because then you can go explore if and then lastly, I think which is going to be maybe this is video one, these two bits, video two, probably is going to be how to make a confirmation password and then save it. So it takes you to a next page where let's see, you get your new password confirmed as a user. And so as you can see, I have a blank canvas, we know what exactly what we're doing, I'm going to follow that wireframe, I just showed you that simple sketch. But something I'm going to share with you today is what I've been working on behind the scenes as I go, it takes a lot of time. And so I might release maybe bit by bit, but it's going to be like a molecule kit because actually is really bad with design systems, I'm going to start with a molecule, let's say, and then you're going to be able to quickly, you know, copy paste the components into your new design and then make it happen. And as a preview, as a very small teaser, let me just show you what's going to be there. But I plan to add quite a few different bits as much as I can achieve without, let's say, global variables or something which you need to do it on your own in your own app thing. As you can see, it has mouse over effects. It has some simple animations and states. It has this type of radio grouping material type of input fields, let's say, which are, let's say, all working and dynamic. You know different bits which you can then reuse and then transfer into your designs and that's what i'm going to use today so stay tuned for this let me know if you want it down below and then you know if there's big demand i'm going to make it happen as soon as i can cool let's jump into it so really quickly i'm going to speed up and recreate that new password thing boom uh, let me preview that the basics work so i have these two and i can save nothing happens of course let's go back Let's make a panel for the call out. Boom. And this is going to be very simple. I'm going to have two conditions to meet. Um, and then you can replicate on your own. And here's where it's going to be interesting. So password strength is going to be a separate text field. These fields are probably just going to be static. But in this one, I'm going to start with weak, let's say by default, and maybe I'm going to have it in red. And then I'm just going to create a dynamic panel because it's the easiest way to then switch to different string. Uh, so I'm going to say strength and just add a couple of states to it medium. And that's going to be yellow, let's say, and then third one, it's going to be so I'm just going to keep it strong, let's say, so I'm going to have three states under strength. And now as a type, I'm going to update it depending on what it is. Next, I'm going to add a couple of icons for match and match criteria. And I'm going to really quickly use this actual one of the libraries, the freely available ones make a dynamic panel out of it and have two states again, same as, as with a password strength. And it's going to be criteria check, or like just criteria, just going to have a couple of uh, panels going to cut that the state one. So I'm just going to say, let's see, unmatched. And then the next one is matched. Boom, I have one component, basically you can make it the master if you wish. Since I have two criteria, I'm just going to label the dynamic panels one and two like so and boom, because you probably have seen other tutorials of mine before. I uh, pause this video and think of what you would do next. I'm sure you have some ideas. What I would do, let's say I would add an interaction immediately on the change of the text, as you can see suggestions on text change set visibility, well, we can select that don't need the visibility. So I'm just going to delete that. And all we need is text change, because when the user is typing, we need to activate those different bits and showcase different value, this is going to be it, I'm going to enable immediately a case. So next, what we're going to do in this conditional statement, as you can see, we have selected our input field, and it relates to that. And this is where it comes out, you can select it if you have named it, it's a good practice to do so. But you can alternatively just check this and then it's going to target that. But we don't need text on the widget here, what we need really is the length of let's say the text, because this condition, we're just going to check that the character is at least 
eight characters long. Or we're gonna have a check that, let's say if it's six, it becomes medium. If it's eight, it becomes strong. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and select length of widget value. Boom, this equals value, let's say, I don't know, six. Or we can also say even like greater than six. You, you could say as well, less than, greater than, but I'm gonna say equals because we have a couple of values that I don't want it to get confused because you can imagine if it's greater than six and eight and we have different conditions, they might clash. So let's keep it very simple. A password is gonna reach six, it's gonna change the state. So I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna just insert action under it and say set panel state, strength, and let's put it to medium, boom. And then I'm gonna immediately copy paste it because I know it's gonna work and just toggle if so that the statements are both equal. And if I'm gonna say, let's say eight, click okay, then just select the next state third, and that should change the strength of the, of the thing. Let's see if that works. So let's say this is my password. I'm gonna type something, 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 boom, connected and made it medium. And then if I type a couple of more, boom, it became strong. Now, if I would delete, as you can see, it goes back to medium. It doesn't go back to, let's say, to weak. We need another basically case, which is gonna be less than six. So let me just rename that as a third length of widget is, I'm just gonna say less than six as a weak state. Boom, boom. And I'm just gonna say, hello world, boom. It, it immediately went to strong. Maybe I need to increase the eight character or just decrease the six. But if I delete, that's six characters. And then if it's less, it immediately goes to weak. But if I add, it immediately increases the strength of, of a password. One part done. It's pretty good, isn't it? But I'm gonna just decrease those scales to four, let's say, which is makes four is gonna make medium. And then let's say uh, everything else is gonna make it stronger. This check is gonna be the easy one to make because it's, as you can see, we want to make it at least eight characters long, right? So we already have that check. So let's see if this equals eight, just add another target to it and add that first criteria, if I remember correctly, and just check it to matched. Click OK, boom, that should be done. So if we start typing something medium, strong, Boom, as you can see, it matched immediately. The only thing what I want to do next is just to assure that, let's say if it's less than eight, so if let's say it becomes, I need another probably case, might want to name your cases. I'm just gonna go less than, let's say eight. So I'm gonna go set panel, criteria one, unmatched. Boom, let's test it out really quick before we move on. I'm typing, 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 match my thing. If I delete, as you can see, delete it, then it went to medium. There is some, some glitch there because the values are not matching, but I'm gonna leave it up to you. You get the drill now how you can do it. Just keep on adding conditions. Make sure you understand in your in your mind how you architecture things here because you might get lost. And so once that's done, now we just need to do that contain one capital letter. And checking for a specific value is gonna be very difficult in Axure. We're gonna to have to use the JavaScript, the hacks to go around it. I found a solution on Axure forums. And so if you have very specific question, you can ask people there as well, because there are some ingenious folk who just go through JavaScript hacks and just bash the text, you know, bash the code and make really awesome solutions. But let me show you what, what's the simplest way to detect if there is a capital letter. And so immediately what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy one of these statements here, the case, and I'm just going to rename the case so we don't get mistaken. And it's going to be cap. And I'm going to know that this is where our magic is going to happen. And right off the bat, it's going to be a bit different from what we did before. Because first and foremost, we need to detect what's the value inside of a text field. And we're going to choose value for this case and go to function. Here, we're going to declare the local variable. If you're new to variables, go back to my video about global and local variables, you're going to understand much more. But we are just going to detect what's the value inside it. And we're going to immediately put it in a variable. We need to keep updating variable in order to check it all the time. And variables are the best to contain a value for us to then check or do something dynamic, basically. And so I'm just going to do LVAR. LVAR is just basic definition. And we're just going to capture that, click OK. And here we're going to say equals. 
And let's say let's equal it to value, not eight, not the length anymore, but LVAR itself. And we're going to add an ingenious tweak here. I'm going to add another local variable and I'm going to say LVAR and note this down. It's going to be two lower case. And let me explain what I mean by that. Just like that, you need to write it just like that. You can't skim on this syntax. So pause the video, note it down if you're going to do this. But basically, you're going to have to do the same variable value and switch it to lowercase. And to lowercase is JavaScript function or a method which basically allows you to transform any text value into lowercase. And you might ask me like, why do I transforming into lowercase? Well, JavaScript is going to return a state based off of that. If it can translate something you type into lowercase, it automatically triggers it that it had a capital case in it. Do you see the connection? Because if we can detect that it had a capital case, then we know that the password contains at least one capital case and then we can activate everything else. It's ingenious. And so let me just run with it. And if you can just note it down and click OK. And as you can see, our criteria one is unmatched, but we need criteria two in this case because it's a different uh, tick. I'm just going to click OK. But now it only detects that it was, let's say, false because there was no lowercase or it was lowercase. We need to also add an inversion. And let me just copy paste the same statement. And I'm just going to edit this to matched immediately cap matched, let's say. Um, I can keep exactly the same statement as here, but I'm going to say does not equal click OK. And just in the state department, I need to select match and I, I can see that it just defaulted to state. So I need to update that. But before I continue, as you can see, one statement is checking that it equals to that thing. Another statement is checks that it does not equal and then sets it to match. So we are reversing it. If it does have capitals, we're going to set it to match. If it doesn't have capitals, we're going to set it the opposite. So let's test it out. If a syntax is correct like this, check it out yourself. You always need to add local variables as well as type in this text correctly. This is really, really important. And then I'm going to hit preview. I'm going to hope that if I type something in lowercase, which I am right now, you can't see it doesn't detect. But now I'm going to type a capital case. Boom, 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 boom it detected. And if I delete, it goes back to doesn't contain capital. And if I start typing capitals, amazing, it does work. That's it. That's all there is. It's just that simple. But it's also a bit of a hacky sneaky way to do it. So once we're done with that, we can then confirm if a value is matched and maybe do something ingenious, like allow, you know, the safe password to do some animations or something like that, or, or deactivate it, activate it, something along those lines. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. As per usual, give a like, subscribe to this channel as well if you haven't done so, and stay tuned for more material.